A very warm welcome to Bhutan This Week, our weekly news magazine program with me, Sharab Dorji. Our top stories this week, His Majesty the King and Her Majesty the Gelsin offered last respects to lead King of Thailand. Representatives from two largest monasteries in Ladakh, Hemis and Shemre offered Kusum Thugi Mende to His Holiness the Jekimpo. And the five registered political parties are finalizing their candidates for the 2018 elections. His Majesty the King and Her Majesty the Gelsin offered last respects to His late Majesty King Bhumibol of Thailand during the royal cremation in Bangkok on Thursday. His Majesty conveyed messages of condolence to His Majesty King Maha Vajralongkorn of Thailand on behalf of the people of Bhutan. Following a year-long mourning period in Thailand for the beloved king, His late Majesty King Bhumibol was cremated today. His late Majesty King Bhumibol Adul Yade passed away on 13th October last year. Due to the special relations between Bhutan and Thailand and the deep admiration in Bhutan for His late Majesty King Bhumibol, prayers were offered at Consul for Drang, presided over by His Holiness the Jekembo for His late Majesty. Members of the royal family of Bhutan attended the prayer ceremony. Bhutan observed a day of mourning on 14th October 2016 and schools and offices remained closed to enable Thai nationals living and working in Bhutan as well as Bhutanese to offer their prayers and respects. The national flag was flown at half-mast. Their Majesties visited Thailand on 16th October last year to offer respects as His late Majesty King Bhumibol lay in state in the Grand Palace. Bhutan and Thailand established diplomatic relations in 1989 and Druk Air, the national airlines, began regular flights to Bangkok, opening up travel and communication between the peoples of the two countries. His Majesty the King visited Thailand as Crown Prince in 2006 to attend the 60th anniversary of His late Majesty King Bhumibol's 60th anniversary of accession to the throne. The relations between Bhutan and Thailand attained an exceptionally warm and intimate dimensions following the visit with an outpouring of affection for His Majesty from the people of Thailand. The relations between Thailand and Bhutan remain stronger than ever today with numerous Bhutanese travelling to Thailand for studies, work, medical treatment, business and holidays and increasing number of reciprocal visits from Thai nationals. Among the many areas of cooperation between Bhutan and Thailand, the Queen's project has been receiving wholehearted support from the royal projects of Thailand geared towards empowering local economies through strengthening cottage enterprises for similar projects in Bhutan. Choni for BBS News. A group of four led by the administrator of the two largest monasteries in Ladakh, Hemis and Shemre, offered Kusum Thugi Mende to His Holiness the Jekimpo at Kunsil Foda. The team representing Gelwang Drukpa Rinpoche were here to further strengthen the strong religious and spiritual relationship between the two regions. With utmost appreciation and devotion, the team comprising of monks and local Buddhist community of Ladakh offered their prayers to His Holiness the Jikinpo. One of the members said the similarities shared by the people of Bhutan and Ladakhis brought them here. We were instructed, we were blessed or instructed by His Holiness Gelwang Drupa and he always, almost wished us to be, have a very good relationship with the Bhutan government, Bhutan people because we have a very unique and we have a very similarities, so many similarities with the Ladakh and Bhutan. That's how it makes us to come here. Including the Bhutanese devotees, various disciples from different monasteries of Nepal and India also comes to offer the Kusung Thugi Mandrel to His Holiness the Jikin. Kusung Thugi Mandrel is one of the integral parts of the religious offerings in Buddhism. It is also believed to be one of the best ways to accumulate merits and purify oneself from all sins. Thousands of devotees, including monks from all across the country, attend the oral transmission every day. 
The ongoing three-month-long oral transmission of Kanjur will conclude next month. Pasang Doji, PBS News. If you think Buddhism is a complex subject to understand, it will no longer be an issue soon. The country's two reputed institutions for Buddhist culture and literature are collaborating to carry out research on everything that has to do with Buddhism. Tangu University of Buddhist Studies and Takzi College of Language and Culture Studies will research on Buddhism to enhance its essence. The first national seminar on Buddhism and culture and literature was held recently. The heads of the two institutions said, today Buddhism is perceived as a discipline of the monastic community or institutions. Although majority of the Bhutanis are Buddhist, most often the ordinary mass do not understand the essence of the religion. They said this is when people end up looking for spiritual well-being in materialistic objects. The meaning of spiritual well-being means I'm able to see that my happiness, my prosperity, my well-being you know, to a large extent is within myself and I, for that I have to look in, into myself. For that you, one need not have to be a monk or a nun or a religious you know, so-called uh, individual. It can be anybody. You can be a doctor, you can be an engineer, you can be a student, farmer, whatever you are, but you are able to explore your well-being within yourself. Because today we see that um, whatever comes from outside is the object of our sensual uh, sensa sensations. Through research, the two institutions will make Buddhism a subject understandable by the new generation. They will also revive Buddhist arts. We need strategies to teach or make the modern people understand Buddhism. For an instance, today my lecture is on arts and painting. Art is there in Buddhism and now we have contemporary art and paintings. For example, to paint Buddha we have the age-old art and then there is contemporary art too. Of course, it is easier to paint and draw it contemporary style. And this can put the traditional painting and art of drawing into extinction. If we can advocate and teach you traditional ways of painting and drawing, they can revive it. They will be conducting similar seminars and publish books for the reference of public to engage in Buddhist studies. Poop Game for BBS News. Every year, 20th of October is marked as the World Statistics Day. Reliable and up-to-date statistics are vital for planning socio-economic development of a country. Here in Bhutan, the theme for the day was better statistics, better decisions. I took a look at some of the key statistics in the country. The day is observed to raise awareness on the importance and role of statistics in the formulation of effective plans and policies. Timely and quality data ensures efficient policies and plans. Bhutan's population has been seeing steady growth, increasing by an estimated 1.4% since 2005. This year, Bhutan's population is estimated to be around 780,000, more than half of which are male. Among them, more than 500,000 fall under the working age population. With more than 65% of its population in the working age, unemployment is an issue. However, Bhutan's unemployment rate has been seeing slow and steady decrease. No data is available for 2016, but the figure decreased from 2.6% in 2014 to 2.5% in 2015. Urban unemployment rate showed a drastic drop in 2015, but it is still a huge concern at 3.1%. Bhutan's population is not an aging population and it has a lot of people in the children and young adult group. The demographic dividend of Bhutan is at its peak. The proportion of working age people in the total population is high. It indicates Bhutan have more people with the potential to be productive and contribute to the growth of the economy. With camera person Sangye Chofel, Sherab Dorji, BBS News. An ex-convict has filed a complaint against some prison guards of Lungzo District Prison in Tashigang for alleged physical battery. The 19-year-old who served 
two-year prison term said he was handcuffed and physically assaulted. He filed a complaint to the police headquarter after completing his prison term last month. Leki Doji from Samkar in Tashigang was convicted for two years in connection with the battery case in September 2015. He served his whole prison term in Lungzo District Prison in Tashigang. Soon after his release, he came to BBS to report on the use of physical force by the prison guards. Leki Doji is alleging the prison guards for physically abusing the inmates and misuse of power by the prison authorities. While serving his prison term, Leki Doji claims that he was stabbed by one of the inmates due to prison guards' negligence. One of the inmates stabbed me on my back. I was taken to the hospital and I put up a complaint letter but the officer did not take any action. Leke Doji said he was also battered by a group of police personnel for no genuine reason while in the prison. He said about 10 people, including those who were on duty, battered him. He added that almost all inmates were victims of physical abuse. They kicked and punched me and hit me with bamboo sticks and water pipes. I still have scar marks from those injuries. They even didn't take me to the hospital, despite my request. Besides being physically battered, he said prison authorities are misusing their power. He said he went through a lot of hardship to complete his prison term. There was a prisoner who has some mechanical knowledge. He was taken outside the prison most of the time to do some personal works and bring him back in the night. We even had to go and look for an inmate who escaped under the influence of alcohol. We are made to do their personal works like vegetable gardening. Leke Doji claims that the injury marks on his body are because of the physical battery. He says he is coming forward to report on the issue for the benefit of other inmates and to get justice. Police said they have no comments on the issue. For Chenga Doji, this is Sherab Doji, BBS News. The Anti-Corruption Commission has forwarded an embezzlement case allegedly involving the Goshingab of Shemgang Sangileto to the Office of the Attorney General. According to the ACC's finding, the GAP has embezzled public funds amounting to over 10 million from 2011 to 2015. During the investigation, the Anti-Corruption Commission found that Goshingab dealt the procurement-related activities for two projects, with the intention to misuse the funds. The projects are Goshing Geo Connectivity Road Construction and Farm Road Construction of Lamtang Mewangang. The Commission found that GAP has allegedly misused the amount by inflating the bills from Bhutan Oil Corporation by colluding with an employee of Galifu Fuel Depot while purchasing petrol, oil, and lubricants for the excavators. The Commission report reveals that GAP has also misused the amount through fraudulent hiring of machinery and drugs from private parties on lump sum price, but billing to Georg's account on hourly system, thereby profiting the difference. The report also says in some cases, the GAP made false claims against machinery that were never deployed at the sites. The investigation found that some of the amounts were embezzled by reflecting ghost workers in master roll payment. He also never accounted the amounts received from the community contractors for the use of central machinery unit excavator and materials which otherwise is procured from the Georg budget. The GUP was also found to have fraudulently made a claim for the construction of a drain. The ACC started the investigation after receiving a walk-in complaint in June 2015 against the incumbent Goshingup. For Cheng Adoji, Game for BBS News. With 2018 just around the corner, the tussle between political parties is also getting closer.
the parties are busy finalizing candidates while also strategizing new ideas to attract voters. For now, it seems there will be at least five parties to contest the elections, unless there are new parties registering. BBS got in touch with the five registered political parties. Bhutan Kinyam Party is all set for the elections next year. The party president says preparations for the upcoming election is done, but works are going on to make the party stronger. We are more or less prepared, but again, we want to make the team stronger. We want to make the team stronger, but we are quite comfortable. We are quite comfortable. If you're talking about 2018, we are ready. But I think we need to also look at beyond 2018 to really establish the political party. And I think that will also apply to all the parties that establish this as a very strong institution as a means. The political party or the election, winning the election, is not the goal. It's a means to strengthen democracy. And in strengthening democracy, uh, strengthen our nation. In the meantime, Druk Chirwang Sokpa is also finalizing their candidates. The party will be making some changes, but most major decisions have been left for their party convention, which will take place in November. Currently, we are uh, finalizing our candidates and uh, identifying some new candidates as well, who will probably replace some of our older candidates. We are also revisiting our manifesto to see if it is still relevant for 2018 election and, and beyond. And uh, we are also working towards, uh, uh, you know, our party convention in November. Similarly, Druk Nyam Sokpa says they are also done with their preparations. The party is almost done with the identification of new candidates and works are going on to strengthen their manifesto. The party says they are coming in stronger than before. We have uh, almost completed the identification and nomination of uh, almost all the candidates. Um, of the identified candidates, majority are in their constituencies conducting the familiarization program with due approval from the Election Commission of Bhutan. We have a few civil servants who are continuing to serve, but uh, we are hopeful that they will resign in due time and will have adequate time to conduct their familiarization. Meanwhile, Druk Pinsum Sokpa shared they are taking on twin responsibilities. The party, while still shouldering the responsibilities of an opposition, is also preparing for the upcoming elections. DPT says there have been an abundance of choice, but they are selecting only the best candidates. <laughs> From our 14 parliamentarians, four of them will be retiring because of the age factor. So we will have only 10, which means we have to identify 37 new members. I cannot see how many we have finished selecting, but we have completed about 60% of the selection works. And the People's Democratic Party says carrying out their duties as the government is their first priority. But preparations for the elections next year are ongoing and are almost done. Identification of new candidates is almost complete and the party is currently working to strengthen their manifesto. We are working at strengthening the Zonka offices and identifying our Georg coordinators. We are also in need of 16 new candidates, so we are busy with identifying and selecting them. We are also compiling the documents and preparing our policies and plans. The third parliamentary election process is expected to start from February next year. With additional information from Sonam Pinso, Isha Gelson, BBS News. Poor condition of public toilet in the country has been a topic for discourse among people most often informally. But the scenario is now changing for the better as both individuals and organizations come forward to tackle the issue. Bhutan Toilet Organization, Bhutan's first non-profit organization for toilet, is one such organization committed towards building a sensible toilet culture in the country. 
Founded informally in 2014, the organization's objective is to inspire and empower individuals and communities through education, advocacy and social initiatives about toilet culture. The organization started managing public toilets during major events like religious ceremonies, festivals and public gatherings. Besides cleaning the public toilets in the country, Bhutan Toilet Organization also sets up portable and removable toilets made out of wood and traditional interlocking system. We also built uh, three different types of portable toilets to be taken during festivals, all wooden or plywood. And they are doing well, but they are not uh, built to last or they are not uh, suitable for certain places. When it comes to budgeting, he said Bhutan Toilet Organization is not yet sustainable as all the funding comes from projects and donations which will be exhausted once the projects are over. Now our major project is coming up uh, importing real portable toilets and once we have that I don't think money will be a problem because during national events, emergencies and any event across the country we will put those toilets and from individual uh, events like fair, trade fair, private uh, organized events, we will charge them money and make money out of that. Today, the organization has ambassadors in all the districts to manage sanitation facilities. It has also introduced toilet clubs in some colleges under the Royal University of Bhutan. Bemasalun String, BBS News. Oftentimes, when people hear about rap, some paint a picture of something negative. Not long ago, rap was looked the same way as it is now. But today, the popularity has picked up quite well and rap is now well accepted by the Bhutanese audience. Rap is an abbreviation for rhythm and poetry. These are a few of aspiring rappers who are becoming the face of rap in the country. Today, through the musical genre of rap, many young people are taking the freedom to express themselves. For Namgi Sering, popularly known as Nala, rap is what kept him afloat when he was struggling with drugs. <laughs> It is his love for music and passion for rap that he was able to bring himself back on track. He raps exclusively in Zongkong. <laughs> Similarly, other rappers have found comfort in rapping and are popularizing it in the country. Once upon a time, I met the perfect guy. He had the cold gate smile, he had the tooth and tie. Mama always said, get a rich boyfriend. You don't gotta love him. Though they do not earn a living through this, it is their passion that gives them going. Everybody sees a smile, but there's a trope. Every smile has its price, and she paid the dues. An artist should not lie. An artist should be truthful. And what rap has let me do uh, so far is, I've always been truthful in my lyrics and in my music, so therefore rap has always been a way in which I can express myself. Ever since I was a little girl, I used to like um, singing and rapping, and um, and as I grew up, um, I noticed that I was more, I was better in rapping than in singing. So then I started to um, practice more. Rap is the only genre in all of music that can really uh, portray message to the people and influence uh, compared to other music because in rap there's a lot of words involved and you can, you can really influence people by the words that we say. There are a lot of misconceptions with rap being associated with violence but it is actually a story of what is going on, where they are from and who they are. 
Their music represents their area and the people and is no different from a farmer singing about his farm. Choing Zatsu, owner of M Studio and the man behind all of these artists, said due to the popularity of rap, more young people are coming to record in his studio. When it comes to songs, there are certain limitations. But when it comes to rap, not only do you have the freedom of the length, but you have the freedom of words, you have the freedom of beats, you have the freedom of either having an, an element of song in it or not. So, and you have the freedom of you know, coming up with a hate song or a love song. So that way I feel that freedom resonates with the younger generation. These rappers may not have reached the stars, but their efforts might land them on the moon one day. Sunam Pem for BBS News. Tandin Doji is crowned as the best archer in the international style compound archery competition held in the capital. Young Phil organized the two-day event for the first time to find the best Bhutanese talents in compound archery. After overcoming several competitive archers in the elimination round, Tandin Doji faced Trashi Belger, who represented Bhutan in the International Compound Bow Tournament held in China in 2015. With complete calmness and composure, Tandin Doji hit three perfect shots in the first round. His precision and accuracy proved lethal as he defeated Tashi Pelger with a score of 142 out of 150. In the international style compound bow competition, the target is set at the range of 50 meters. 72 arrows are shot during the qualification round. This is followed by the knockout round where each player shoots 15 arrows. The player with the highest point wins the game. The top three archers will represent Bhutan in the Asian Archery Championship next month in Dhaka, Bangladesh. According to the top ranked women archer of the competition, Doji Dolma, not many women are forthcoming despite the steady growth of the game in the country today. Only six women took part in the competition. <laughs> The ones who are participating in this competition are all former archers. Till now, not many women turned up for the competition. I feel more women should come forward, only then we would be able to compete with men. However, the number of archers was encouraging this time. The competition is being organized for the very first time by Young Phil. There were few such competitions organized earlier. In terms of participations, the number has increased prior to the previous competitions. More than 50 participants took part in the competition. In the team's category, Team TD took away the first position, followed by Team Dragon's Breath and the East-West team. The competition will be an annual event hereafter. Pasang Doji, BBS News. Well, that's all we have for you this time. Join us again next week for yet another episode of Bhutan This Week. Until then, keep yourself warm. This is Sherab Doji saying goodbye.